Welcome to Adventures in TV Land. For today's adventure, I've come to Independence, Missouri to visit the Harry S. Truman Presidential Library and Museum. So let's go and check it out. Now in 2021, the Harry S. Truman Presidential Library and Museum reopened to the public after a massive multi-million dollar renovation. It had been closed for a couple of years and uh, of course then there was the start of the pandemic and all of that. So it reopened 2021 and now I finally made it back over here to this area of Missouri and I'm excited to check it out. Check out the li presidential library of Harry S. Truman, president who was truly a man of the people. There's a statue of Truman there. Presidential seal. Hours are 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. Monday through Saturday. 12 p.m. to 5 p.m. Sundays. Closed Thanksgiving, Christmas, and New Year's. So one of the first things you see when walking into the museum is this quote, the picture of President Truman. Our goal must be not peace in our time, but peace for all time. Here is a look in the, really the first large room of the museum. It has a bunch of artifacts from Truman's early life, including the family piano that he learned to play piano upon. Golden haired girl, Truman knew Bess, Bessie from a very very early age. Now here are a couple items of interest. One is Harry Truman's job application for Commerce Bank. And the other here is his employee evaluation when he was worked at the bank. He said that uh, Truman is keeping the work up in the vault better than it has ever been kept. And when World War I broke out and the United States entered the war, Truman, he went back into the military. And so he would get a passing grade. He actually memorized the eye chart. Now in the middle of this room, they have this cylinder. And on the outside of the cylinder are copies of the love letters written from Truman to Bessie, to Bess Truman, during his time overseas. Uh, they have a lot of hands-on things. It's kind of cool here. Some of Truman's favorite books. You pull a book out, it tells you more about how that book influenced Truman. Here above there is Truman's grandfather's branding iron and one of Truman, his Masonic Bible that he carried around with him quite often. Here are his items from World War I. One of his uniforms, you know, his helmet, his trunk. Now, Truman was made a brigade commander, and he actually, during the, his time in World War I, they did not lose any men. Uh, his men thought first when they met him that he was kind of a he kind of a wimp, but he soon turned things around, and they actually they liked him so much they gave him this cup, nicknamed the Loving Cup. When Truman returned home, him and Bess they had a little baby girl, Margaret. And now we get into the part of Truman's life that is often overlooked: the Pendergast machine. Now, one of the men under Truman's command during World War I was Jim Pendergast, who was the nephew of the famous Kansas City mob boss, Tom Pendergast. And Truman owed a lot of his early success in politics 
to the Pendergast machine. If it wasn't for the Pendergast, Harry Truman may not have ever ro rose up through the ranks. This is a somewhat infamous photo. Uh, it's of a 19-year-old, I believe, Lauren Bacall on the piano. At this time, Vice President Truman. Now here, we get into a more serious note. This is the Bible that Truman was sworn in as president with after the death of FDR. And he had to read the, the oath here. I, Harry S. Truman, do solemnly swear that I will faithfully execute the office of the President of the United States and will, to the best of my ability, preserve, protect, and defend the Constitution of the United States. And Truman, he became thrust into the middle of the world stage. Things advanced quickly. Yeah, the World War II was starting to die down, but it soon came to end. These are the pens that the Axis powers signed, used to sign the peace treaty in Europe. Here's a, a pen given to Truman from Winston Churchill. This is a green plug. This was the safety plug that was on the atomic bomb before it went to Nagasaki. Before the bomb left, there was this green plug, but then once it was loaded on the aircraft, the green plug was removed and replaced with a red plug, which actually activated the bomb. This globe here, kind of the center, you know, the start of the Cold War, it symbolizes what was going on in the world at that time. Here is the original marker on the USS Missouri where the peace treaty with Japan was signed. This was later given to Truman after the ship was restored. This next section talks about the Berlin airlifts. It goes into great detail about how many supplies were airlifted in each day and so on and so forth. Here are some facts about the airlift. 2,000 tons of food per day to feed the citizens of Berlin. Now here, in this, up in the hanging down, there's 594 airplanes. That's how many planes every day f flew into Berlin. This is about the 1948 campaign. And there, it's a very infamous item, Dewey defeats Truman, one of the newspaper. That is the newspaper that Truman held up after he found out he was going to be re-elected as president. Fair deal. These are all items, social programs that Truman worked on during his administration. The Red Scare, of course, if you've seen Oppenheimer recently, that played a big part there in Oppenheimer. They actually have a little table there you can actually look in and listen to conversations of tape recordings. Uh, this is about Israel, because during Truman's presidency, Israel became a nation, 1948. There are some items that were given to Truman from the Israeli people and their leaders. The civil rights became a major issue during Truman's time. And once again, the Cold War and the Korean War that came about because of the Cold War. Now, I did not know this, but there was an assassination attempt on Truman's life. These were the guns that were used to attempt the assassination with. This painting here is entitled Independence and the Opening of the West. It was done by Thomas Hart Benton. Originally, it was located in what was the original entrance here to the Harry S. Truman Museum. Here is the famous The Buck Stops Here sign that was on Truman's desk. Truman's Table. Now here, we're going to give a 360 degree look, but this is a recreation of what the Oval Office would have looked like during Harry Truman's presidency. Uh, you know, they've recreated this using 
photographs and notes and place things in very detailed where they were during Truman's presidency. Now, despite all the records, there's still some items that we know that were there, but we're not for sure what they were for or came from, such as this cob of corn. No one knows why Truman had it. Now, many people do not know that the White House was actually being remodeled during the large part of Truman's presidency, and so they did not live in the White House for very long. This mantelpiece, Truman saved from being destroyed, was known as the Buffalo Mantel. It was put there by Theodore Roosevelt. Now these are some of the original beams that were in the White House before the reconstruction. The entire White House during Truman's presidency, it wasn't gutted, the entire interior and everything was uh, restored or recreated. And like the second floor almost collapsed. One of these beams, it actually had started to split in two. Now in the basement here, we have some of Truman's vehicles. However, at the time of my visit, these vehicles were not on display. This is called the Benedict Arnold Cannonball. At the time of my visit, a large portion of the, the basement here it's devoted to photographs from throughout Truman's life. And not just his presidency, but throughout his entire life. Some of these are famous photographs, some are not so famous, some of them are somewhat infamous. I like this photograph here. This is when the Truman Library was originally being built and former President Nixon came and visited Truman. Truman was known for playing the piano, but Nixon played it as well. And here is Jack Benny playing the violin with Sherman playing the piano. Eternal Flame placed here in March 15th, 1991 on the anniversary of the 72nd year that the American Legion was in, ex was in existence. graves of President Harry S. Truman and his wife, Bess. And also buried here was Harry and Bess's daughter, Margaret, and her husband, Clifton. Now in a somewhat separate building from the main museum is this old muse building that was where Truman planned for his museum. Before Truman, like presidential museums, they were not what we have them are and know them to be today. I mean, Truman was actually, his was really the first. Readers of good books, particularly books of biography and history, are preparing themselves for leadership. Not all readers become leaders, but all leaders must be readers. Here on the grounds outside the library is a replica of the Liberty Bell. This was given to the people of Independence, Missouri, from a community of people in France. So that was 
the Harry S. Truman Presidential Library and Museum in Independence, Missouri. It was an, an interesting museum. A very, I learned some things I did not know. I'm a little bit more familiar with Truman than I am some other presidents uh, because he was from Missouri, I was from Illinois, kind of the same region of the country. However, I did not know several things. For instance, I did not know one that uh, the White House went under uh, a massive reconstruction or rebuilding during Truman's presidency. And actually, for most of his presidency, he didn't even live in the White House. He lived in the Blair House. Um, I did not know that. Another thing I learned is that Truman, um, I knew at the time, like when he, after he was no longer president, they didn't have things set up for him the way they do now for presidents, for former presidents. So there was no former salary, anything like that, pension, whatnot. When he moved back here to Independence, he actually, he wanted, and he started the presidential library. I mean, that was his goal. I mean, he wanted to donate everything of his that he could personally back to the American people. And so presidential libraries that we're kind of familiar with now, there are a lot of them. Um, and even some of the older presidents, there's more of them because of, yeah, just over time. Truman was the first to actually... You know, he raised, even helped raise the funds. It was mostly done through private donations. The largest donation that was donated originally for the, the building of this library originally was $50,000 from a corporate sponsor. That was it. That was the largest one. It cost $1.7 million when they first built it. But most of it was made in small donations, private donations from individuals, people sending money and things like that. And Truman, after his retirement from the presidency, I mean, he resided back here in Independence, and he worked here at the library. He had an office. That's where his office was. He was here six days a week, unless he was ill. He walked back and forth from his home here to the library. It's quite amazing, honestly. Well, this has been another adventure in TV land. Thank you for watching. If you liked this video, hit the like button. If you disliked, hit the dislike button. Subscribe to my channel for further content and ring that bell for email notifications. And if there's some place that you would like to see me visit, or you have a suggestion about some future video you would like to see me do, leave a comment in the comment section. And if you've enjoyed this adventure or any of the adventures in TV land, you can help support this channel by going to either buy me a coffee or Patreon and making a financial donation or becoming a member at either one of those two places. You can also help support this channel by making a super thanks on this video. It's the little heart with the dollar sign in it down below. Hit that. You can make a, you know, just a 99 cent donation if you want. And that, that helps support the channel as well. Thank you for watching. Until next time, that's a wrap.